Hello, and welcome to our introduction to ways shapes can be altered. In our last video, we explored the idea that although linear measurements are useful when describing a shape's perimeter, we need a second dimension to help us describe what's inside. Being able to measure the area or space inside a shape is very helpful. Finding ways to describe all the new things we discover about our world is a pretty common occurrence. We will focus our attention for the next few videos on four common ways shapes can be changed. The word transformation, which means to change, will be used to describe the entire group. The changes we see in a butterfly or popular toy can be described as transformations. Before we jump into details, Consider for a moment what ways you think we could change or alter a simple shape like this. Would you agree we could simply move its position? Sure, mathematicians have chosen the term translation to describe this change. Okay, what else? Could the object be turned or rotated? Sure. How about a reflection of the object? And hopefully you recognize that the object's size could be altered. You're likely pretty comfortable with most of these terms, so applying them to geometry should not be a big stretch. We will explore each type of transformation in more detail, starting with translations. Translation means that the shape has changed position and nothing else. Perhaps remember that if you changed your place on Earth, you would be the same, but your position would be different, and you'd likely need a translator. Let's look at some examples. Here's a triangle that has been translated. The grid lines can help us confirm that only its position has changed. The original image, triangle ABC in orange, is identified as the figure. The translated triangle is shown above as the image in green with new markings on the respective letters. Each point of the triangle has moved the same, one step to the right and three steps up. Of course, you could also suggest that each point has moved three steps up and one step to the right. The order doesn't matter as they end up in the same place like taking a different hallway at school. Starting with the orange figure, rectangle ABCD, suggests how it was translated. You could use any of the four points as your starting point. If we move it right and down, its shift looks like this. We could pick point D to start and describe the translation as five squares to the right and three squares down. Note the gray arrow joining the two C's. This is called a vector arrow that was used to guide the translation. This is something you'd see in geometry software if you wanted to explore further. Any shape can be translated, and at any distance, as long as it is the same for all points in the polygon. How far has this tree been shifted? we would describe its change as two and a half to the left and one and a half down. Although much of what we learn is new, a lot of our learning is connecting to things we already have some understanding of. New information is easier to grasp and remember when we connect it to previous learning and approach it in a common sense kind of way. Transformations are a pretty good example of how, with a little creative thinking, we could likely identify most, if not all, of the transformations we've introduced in this section. Objects being moved, rotated, flipped, and resized is something we do fairly frequently. Once again, look for ways you can connect your learning to the world around you, as it makes learning so much more enjoyable and memorable. Now that we have confidently described translations as objects only changing their positions, we are ready to explore rotation in our next section.